Hey y'all, here we go. We back in the studio one more time. Isers. Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee, the radio show where we talk about it all. Hey, welcome to Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee. With me is my co-host, Kevin Eaton. Good morning, Baltimore. Good morning. Hey, how was your weekend? My weekend was fine. I want to tell everybody why my weekend was so fine. Okay. And my morning is just dandy right now because I'm sitting right beside a woman of power. A woman of power. Yes, yes. <laughs> that was a wonderful event that you invited me to. I just want our Baltimore listeners to know that, you know, your your co-host, your wonderful, your co-host was just happy to be with the host at the uh, Women of Power event on, on was it Thursday? That was Thursday. The Congratulations, the Cuzzo. Thank you so much. I was so honored to be nominated for that. And I tell you, there was so much strength and power and positivity in that room. Mm -hmm. You know, I was actually honored in addition to uh, four other women. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my goodness, the energy in that room was incredible. I am so honored to be a woman of power. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank and you. Good work. Keep and up you know the good what? Work. Something, uh, another special event took place okay. too. Someone celebrated a special birthday on the third. Yes, he did. That's who, me. Who, the worldwide least That's talked right. about co-host <laughs> turned half a century. Half a century. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And you partied hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sure did. Had a shaking leg. Hey, that's how you do it. Had me in there with all the women's of power. I was like, oh, I got to do something. Get on over here and shake a leg. And you did, because <laughs> I have it on videotape. <laughs> on the air, we have Miss B. Hi, Miss B. Good morning. Good morning, How are you B. doing? Doing wonderful. Happy good. New Year. Good, good, good. Good. Happy New Year to you, too. Mm-hmm. Did you see Ray Lewis yesterday do that bird dance? No. What? The rest <laughs> of the world did. I'm sure they did. <laughs> that was one heck of a dance, I got to tell you. I well, heard about it, though. I did hear about it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you could always visit my page on Facebook because you know I have it there. I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. That's right, number one fan. Mm -hmm. Ray Lewis land. <laughs> you know, I don't know if most of our listeners have heard about Hugh Hefner marrying a 26-year-old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our one of our topics today mm -hmm. is going to be why younger women marry older men, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Or why older men marry younger women or become involved with mm -hmm. uh, younger women. Uh, would you please give us a call if you'd like to contribute to the conversation? The telephone number is 410-481-1010 or 1-877-704-1010. So we're talking about older men and younger women. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is the age gap that you think we should say that makes a younger woman a younger woman from a man? 10 years? I say 10 years. years. What do you think, Miss B? Um, 10, 15, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think 10 is good. Oh, you think 10 is good? I think yeah. 10's a lot. Well, no, I, think ten, I think it depends on what age you are. Mm -hmm. If you're 50, that's like true. myself, <laughs> you I know, agree. and you have somebody that's 40, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's pretty, pretty good. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But if you're 50 and you have somebody 22. Oh, my gosh. Now, that's something. Yeah, yeah, you know. Or in the I, case of Hugh Hefner, he's 86 and she's 26. I mean, come on. He's old yeah. enough to be her grandfather. Yeah. Or uh, great-grandfather, really. Mm -hmm. Very good point. <laughs> yeah, I think I think relationships like that are money-motivated. Do you oh, think yeah. so, at least yes. on her part? Oh, yeah. Yes, on her part, I think it's oh. money-motivated. On his part, I think that he know he has so much money. He's got more money than the dog got fleas. Mm. So it's like, you know, he can get anybody, you know, pretty much, you know, that'll come his way. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I just think that when they have like older men with the young women like that, they have to live like a, a secluded life, mm -hmm. you know, because like uh, we're family people, you know, we're always around our families and stuff like that. Yes. And, um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I were to bring a, 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 a 21 year old around my 30 year old daughter, I know she would have to say something like, what? Daddy, have you lost your mind? <laughs> she would you know? say it, I'm sure she would. Yeah, but if I was a rich man and lived up in the Hollywood Hills somewhere, you know, and didn't see my family at all, it you know, wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter because I live in my own world, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Miss B, how do you feel about that? You know, I think um, if, if the person is old enough to be your father, mm hmm. That's really out. Yes. I had um, a similar situation. A friend of my daughter's father was dating a girl that was three or four years older than she was, and they oh. had a fit. 
I, I can don't see that. three and four years older. No, man. older than the daughter. Oh. Older than the daughter. Oh, yes. older than the daughter. And, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I told her, I said, honey, I said, you know, it, it, it's sad, but it happens. Oh, it happens all the time. It happens, you know. Yeah. I, I, do, I, do I think, I think, I think when it happens like that, it is money motivated. I think the, wa- the woman is primarily looking for somebody to take care of them. And I think, on the other hand, the man is having his ego stroked. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a lot of times in terms of the woman, I think she's looking for a father figure. I think she's oh, looking yeah. for someone to take care of her and just kind of mm-hmm. take over things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that may be part of it as well, you know, mm-hmm. because you find older men, they're more established financially. Oh, you know, yeah. um, they're just more settled. You know, mm-hmm. and I find that a lot of younger women, you know, especially with marriages, you know, ending and, you know, divorce rate and all of that. You oh, know, yeah. I still say kids, they need both parents, mm-hmm. oh, you yeah. know, so if they lack one or the other, then they're going to go out and seek it in some other form. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I think it isn't always because that's the first thing people think about. Oh, she's a gold digger. She's out for his money. Mm-hmm. That may be the case sometimes. But I think sometimes, you know, they're actually looking for a father figure, mm-hmm. someone to, mm-hmm. you know, take care Fill of them. Those shoes, mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Guide them Jeff. in different ways or whatever. Exactly. One eight seven 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 zero four ten ten or four ten four eight one ten ten. And you know, on that subject, also, I think that the older you get, the wider the gap is more acceptable. Like if you're yeah. uh, twenty hmm. and you're and you're uh, you know dating somebody that's sixteen, I mean that's sort of off. Right. You know, but as you get uh-huh. older. You know, like I say, if you're 40 and you're dating somebody 32, mm-hmm. which is more years in between. That's true. It's more acceptable. You know, it's more, you know. That's a very you're mature. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully you are at that point anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I have a list of some uh, celebrity older men, younger women couples. Um, the Jim Carrey to Jenny McCarthy. Mm-hmm. Elvis Presley to Priscilla. Mm-hmm. Ronald Reagan to Nancy. Mm-hmm. Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie. John F. Kennedy, Jacqueline, okay. Prince Charles, Diana, mm-hmm. Donald Trump, Marla Maples, oh yeah, Nicholas Cage, Alice Kim, mm-hmm. Bruce Willis, Emma Hemming, mm-hmm. Michael Douglas, Catherine Zeta Jones, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure the list goes on and on. Oh, of course, we can't forget Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes. Okay. Okay. Don't forget my boy Ice T and Coco. Oh yeah, because they're in the news, right? <laughs> yeah. Miss B, have you seen? Have you seen the pictures? No. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was getting uh, up close and personal with, uh, do you know who the gentleman was? I don't know. Some guy. Name. Yeah, it's got letters and a number or something <laughs> like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's crazy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. we have Leo on the air. Hi, Leo. Yes, good morning, my friends. Good How morning. are you? Good. good morning. Good. Well, Happy New Year to all of you. Happy, happy New, New Year, Year Leo. Oh. Let me comment on this exciting topic. Recreational sex plays a part in our lives. <laughs> Sometimes it's not serious. Uh, but but the, the, we have adopted, African people, black African people have adopted the European values in more ways than one. And sex is no different. And that, by that I mean uh, we have older uh, women who have been called cougars going after younger men. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, it, I would say it has only been in the last 30, 40 years. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But it, particularly in the last 40 years that you see among black men a copying or carbon copying of what white people do. And that includes this whole issue of, of the difference in ages. It makes you, it appeals to your ego uh, for many of us, for many black men, to have a, a, a younger a younger woman, uh, and of course for younger women who are looking for someone to take care of them, yes. uh, they, you know, a, a older man who is secure, who has a bank account, mm-hmm. he may or may not be rich, but he, or, he offers some kind of stability. They're not serious about matrimony or serious about children or procreation. They're primarily talking about ways of convenience, how one can help the other. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I, I think that that we have adopted, as we became more integrated in American, uh, in the European value system, uh, over time, the more integrated we became, we started doing things that we weren't doing 
50 years ago uh, with rare exception. Mm -hmm. okay. And so we're doing them now. And, 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 and an example of that is same-sex marriage. That was something Martin O'Malley didn't just invent that. I mean, this came out of the European culture, and uh, we, we got caught up in it, and now we got transgender and and gender from Mars. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, that's been going on for a while. Yeah, but. yeah. So uh, again, interesting subject, and fascinating, exciting, and we need to educate people as much as we can. Yes. Now, sex is therapeutic for a lot of people, but uh, realistically, uh, it ought to be about uh, not just being therapeutic and recreation. It ought to be about uh, child rearing and child bearing, mm -hmm. and and making babies so that we can continue our species and continue our lineage in a way that is positive, reflective, I hope, of the seven principles and of African values. Well, okay. thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. Okay. Also, let me put this out there. If you have an older man and a younger woman, you know, like in the case of uh, Ice-T, mm -hmm. should the uh, older man uh, get upset if something like that happened to his younger uh, mate, you know? You in know terms what of what? In terms of spending some time with somebody Younger? her age, yeah. I mean, you know, if you're 20 years, 30 years older than the female and and something like that pops up, mm -hmm. I mean, should you be upset or, or I mean... Or should you understand that you have a younger spouse yeah, you know, now, and she's going to be attracted? And you know, and, and, and sometimes you think about the the woman how she reaches her sexual peak at a different time a mm -hmm, man does. Mm -hmm. You know, and and if you are let's say a fifty year old woman and you're dating a ninety year old man, you're still at your peak. I mean, how can he possibly keep up? Mm -hmm. You know, and then she, you know, I agree. Should he understand? Right, if you should should he understand? Actually, go out and and seek out someone younger. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have Maggie on the line. Hi, Maggie. Welcome, Maggie. Peace and blessings to all of you. Same to you. Thank you. This is a very interesting subject to me because I've often thought about that myself. And then I realized, if you think about the song, Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. Yes. Uh -huh. There are some people who don't like looking in the mirror. Mm -hmm. So if they get someone younger, they don't see themselves. They see basically what they're thinking, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the other thing about Keith Hefner, uh, your co-host is talking about him living on top of the hill or something and not in relations with his family so much. Mm-hmm. Seclusion. Pardon me? Yeah, talking about being secluded like that, where he's not yes, like yes, us. Yes. Right. So he's basically like the lord of the uh, manor, you mm -hmm. know, that's his mansion, the Playboy Mansion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. So he's not even really to be considered with us who are in family minds and family thoughts and values because he's made his image mm -hmm. on playing, mm -hmm. you know, his image on taking advantage of women's vulnerability when they uh -huh. want that little extra buck some pearls and some diamonds and all mm -hmm. those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So I, I see him more or less as a man outside of his humanity. Mm -hmm. oh. mm. okay. okay, well, thank you so much for your comment, thank you. Maggie. Thank you. Have oh, a excuse me. Yes. Could I just say one more thing? Okay. Um, we use that term power so much, I think we've gotten lost in what power really is, the power of nature, you know, whereas we can all be an influence and then there are those who are organized into force. So we got power, influence, and force. And which one really are we dealing with? His is influence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you. All right, okay. bye-bye. Mm -hmm. hmm, very interesting, right? Yeah, even conversational-wise. I mean, if you have somebody that's 20 years, like 20-year gap, mm -hmm. I mean, what is it that, what can they talk about for a while? You, you know, know that's what, I mean? what I'm thinking. That's a totally that's different right. generation. Yeah, exactly. Totally different. But what can you possibly have in common is what I'm wondering. Right. I mean, so, e eventually, I mean, because, you know, because I was reading something yesterday and they were talking about how older men, they may be interested in watching Westerns right, and right. black and white uh -huh. movies and that sort of right. thing. And if they're married to a younger woman, she she's interested in reality Spongebob. shows and Spongebob <laughs> <You know, laughs> pants. So, yeah, you know, so then she meet a younger fella that, hey, I know about Spongebob. Be, oh, Patrick is cool, huh? Exactly. And, you know, it starts off. And you so they're on a completely yeah, different totally level. Familiar. And to her, that may be stimulating yeah, conversation. You know, I mean, she got rings and things and all kinds of stuff like that. But, hey, she got somebody that can relate to her on a level where she can understand, you know, the experience. Absolutely. We have Smalls on the air. Hi, Smalls. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Well, I just wanted to comment on this. Um, 
I don't really see anything wrong with it. My father was 30 years older than my mother. Oh, okay. wow. I'm in, and I'm in my late, in my mid-50s. So, I mean... Okay. You, I mean, it happened a long time ago. So this is nothing like new. I, this is nothing new. And like mm -hmm. I said, he's 30 years older than my mother, and he kept her well. You know, and that's what I was. What I wanted to ask you. So they were actually able to engage in intellectual, stimulating conversations with each other. You know, so they had pretty much the same interests, and they pretty complimented the each same, other. Pretty much the same interests. They were devoted to each other all the way through, and. Like I said, I mean, he, he gave her five kids and put all of them through everything, took care of us well. Wow, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's awesome. So it sounds like to me they met each other in the middle somehow. Great. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your contribution to the conversation, Smalls. Thank you, Smalls. Yeah. Have a great day. Yeah. yeah. But See? But mm. you know, I also uh, did a little, uh, not a little research, but I haven't come across some things on the internet where there are cultures that actually have marriages of young people females to marry oh, yeah. somebody that's like 45 or 50 years old. Oh, the girl yeah. is 11 years old when she's married to this guy, and he's already have about eight wives already. So oh. is that family arranged? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Marriages? Yeah. Oh, my god. It's gosh. a culture. I don't know exactly what yeah. country it is or something like that. But and, not in America. It's overseas. And that's sad, yeah. because most of the time, these young girls, they don't want to marry these they men. They be crying and no. all kind of stuff. Oh, that yeah. is yeah, so they be crying. sad. Mm -hmm. We have Byron on the air. Hello, Good Byron. Good morning, Byron. Hi, Byron. Hey, how y'all doing today? Good. The program kind of late today because I'm had to take care of some things this morning. But okay. we're glad you're here now. Oh, okay, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with as long as a person is, is grown. But I don't think that a person that's a child should be getting married to anybody because maturity level is different. But like, mm -hmm. you ever heard of some people having like an old soul? Yes. Because mm -hmm. I was a kid, people told me that, and I think it's your maturity level to be the only thing that matters as long as you're grown. If a person, say, is, is 40 and he's dating a, a, a young lady that's 25, if she's mature, I don't see anything wrong with that. He, if, he, if both of them are mature, but I feel that t 25 and 40, something like that is cool because you're out of high school, you had a chance to go to college. I feel that if they have something to bring to the table, each other, each other, both of them have something to, to contribute mm -hmm. to the table. I don't feel there's anything wrong with it. Because I'm like this. With such a shortage of love in this world, if you can find somebody mm. and the only reason that you don't want to be with them is because of age, then I think you should think twice because love is very hard to find these days. Mm. And yes, it is. Climate. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything wrong with it if both parties are mature. Yeah, because a lot of women feel that that man can bring experience. You know, he knows okay. how to please her more so than someone her age. Yeah, and if, and if it's true love, that's another thing. If it's true love and you're not getting married because of materialism, yes. or you're not getting married to keep a roof over your head, you know, all that goes into that too. But if y'all, if, if, if he can add something to your life and you can add something to theirs, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. My father was 28 when he married my mother. She was 18. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it worked out good for them. It, so, okay. I mean, it could work out good for anybody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But a lot of us are not mature enough to be married. Not, some of us not even mature enough to be going with somebody. Yes. Tell the truth. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. true. So, I mean, you know, like I said, if, 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 if both, the, both the parties agree and it's okay with them, then people should get out the way and let them people do what, do what they do. I agree. Okay. Thank you so much, Byron. All right, Byron. Have a, have good, a good day. day. Happy New Year. Wow. We have Donna. Donna, you're on the air. How you doing? Hi. Good morning, Donna. Hi, Donna. Enjoying your show. Thank you. I, I have I have a lot of reservations because I you know when I was in my thirties, I had guys in their fifties and sixties running after me, and I, you know, I, I did the math. No, absolutely not. You know, I just could not see myself dating guys twenty, twenty five, thirty years my senior because. When they become 70-something, you know, I'm in my prime. Why, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I, I did the math. I think young, a lot of young women, they don't do the math. They're looking at the money, somebody to take care of them mm -hmm. and whatever. And, and even in my family, we had men. I think one of my relatives dated um, my, one of my cousins. They're like 40. Their dad and them were 40 years different. And, you know, I think it bothers them about that because um, they're, when, they, when their mom died at a young age, you know, like 70, yes. they, they were in like 95, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and, that, and they, they, they bring it up now. So I think 
generational is is different today, and I agree with one of you. Um, one of you all said that you know she's twenty five thirty and he's. 55, 60, what do they have in common? Mm-hmm. And a lot of that stuff starts to come out as they get older. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And because and I had a um, friend of mine that was a professor, an elder professor, she was 35, and her husband, uh, when she married her husband at 60, 60 something, and when he reached 80, he expected her to um, stay home now and take care of her. And exactly. She was, in, she was in her beginning 50s. Mm-hmm. And it was, a, it was terrible. She said, I'm not. I'm not going to take care of him. This is what he wanted. And then she sent a warning out, warning women, be very careful when you marry men. Um, she said um, 12, 10 years and up because she said the, the differences in age and the time period makes a big difference as you get older. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and a lot of the men who are older, like I do have some friend, male friends who are, are dating women. They're in their almost 60, and the guys, women are 34. But these women don't have a lot of money they need somebody to take care of them Mm -hmm. and guide them like a dad so Hmm. you know i you know i just it's i mean if it's like if something like see uh with uh one of our singers um see it was um celine dion she her guy her husband was 40 years old senior yes he was a lot older than her that's a rarity Mm -hmm. you know there's money she made money Mm -hmm. but if they did do a uh a story on her and you know this guy's like what eight almost uh, 75 80 years old and she's like in her 40s mm-hmm. and, but you know so, and he looks like an old man <laughs> but, but you know what, what a lot of younger women fail to realize though is when they marry older men you know they have to concern themselves with the estates with assets and things like that because most of the time they have adult right. children you know oh, yeah. so then that becomes a battle you know, with that man's assets. And oftentimes they find themselves, when that man passes away, they have nothing. Nothing. Hmm. Right. So I think, well, it depends uh, on if they have a will or not. Yeah. Now, if the man has a will, then right. that's going to stand. Yeah, but sometimes that surprises you when that will is open. Oh, yeah. Right. The will is open. And, and then I think um, for men who are in their 50s or 60s um, and the women who are looking for older men, it's, it's more of an economics, like one of your guests said. It's yes. an economics mm-hmm. for the women, for the men is an ego look. You know, but then men, after they start reaching their 50s and 60s, they have erectile issues. Oh, watch your mm-hmm. mouth, man. Watch your mouth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's true. Uh-oh. Watch your mouth. I just turned but 50. You know, <laughs> but you know, Donna, Donna, I'm sorry. I have to cut you off because we have to go into our football segment. But thank, thank you, you so Donna. much for calling thank in. Bye. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> I just turned 50. They don't say that. <laughs> you know, we are a little bit late. It's eleven twenty-four. You know what time it is? It's time for our Monday morning quarterback segment with Ariel and Jimmy. Hi, Ariel and Jimmy. Good morning. Hey, hey, you guys. hey let's talk about Hello. that game yesterday, Jimmy. Actually, it was, a, it was a pretty good game. I do. I still have some concerns with our with our defense because if you if you if you watch the game closely. You will see that they were the the Colts was very productive for the most part on defense mm-hmm. on offense, but the one thing one thing I will say about our defense they bend but they didn't break. Yes. So the fact that we were able to only hold them to our field goals, mm-hmm. and the other thing, if there's an opportunity for a turnover, so plays like that we have to make. Yes. I mean, because if you can take a possession away from the other team, that's something you definitely want to have. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And, so and score and score points on it. What did you think about uh, Ray Rice, his performance yesterday? I, I looked at that game, I really think that his mind wasn't there. Yeah. Either that or he was just trying too hard. I, yeah. I always believe in the philosophy. You go with the you go with the hot hand. Okay. And, Ar- Pierce, and Pierce was definitely the hot hand in that game. Oh you saw my little poem I wrote, right? Oh, yes, I saw it. <laughs> Ariel, what are your thoughts on the game yesterday? I thought it was a good game. I thought Ray Lewis played really well coming off of injury. Yes. Um, he made a lot of quick um, tackles or whatever. I think that the defense did kind of, like Jimmy said, bend a little bit, but they prevented them from getting touchdowns, which is always good, and they only had field goals, and Flacco was able to come out. Um, Bolden did really well. As far as some of the catches he made, I thought they were incredible, especially yes. the one in the end zone. Oh, yeah. he, yes. he had the, the corner with his arm actually in trying to break up the connection, and he still held on to the ball. I thought that was great. That was but amazing. All in all, I thought we did good on each end of the football. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jimmy, what are your thoughts in terms of next week? I, th- I think as far as on o- as far as on offense, we need to 
con- you know, maintain the ball, hold on to like my my philosophy is always time of possession. That that is so important to keep a quarterback like Peyton Manning off the field. Mm-hmm. And if if, it, if if he gives us an opportunity, we need to take it, whether it's a turnover, whatever it might be. We have to take advantage of it. Yes, Ariel, your thoughts for next week. It's all about Flacco. Mm-hmm. You know, his contract is up for negotiation. It's all about Flacco. You have to keep, as like Jimmy said, man and off the field. If yes. he's on the field, you're in trouble. <laughs> so it's a matter of time of possession. We have to often to stay out. Even if we don't get touchdowns at the end of the field goal, we have to chew up the time off the clock to keep Manny off the field. All right, now. Thank you, too, so much. Thank this you. officially ends our m- Monday morning quarterback segment with Ariel and Jimmy. Both of you have a great day. All right, you too. All right, bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right, Kevin. Yes, indeed. You know Go what ahead. I want to say? C-O-I-F-F-U-R-E. <laughs> Quafure. <laughs> Our sponsor for the Shop Talk with Cassandra and Nate show. Exactly, Mm -hmm. exactly, because we specialize in hair replacement and hair extension services. Um, Also, we like to uh, ask you to visit our website, Mm -hmm. talkwithcassandra.com, sign our guest book, and also, mm, I slipped. Mm. I'm going to give you the telephone number for Quiet Your Exclusive, 410-663-2640. Coiffure, C-O-I-F-F-U-R-E. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Mm -hmm. If I had some hair, I'd go there. Oh, you would? Mm -hmm. But you know, I can put some hair on your head. (laughs) That is not a problem. And now that you've turned 52, I can hook you up. Can you get the gray out? I can do that, too. the gray out, I'd be all right. My hair turns green when people put dye in it. See, they be mixing them stuff wrong. I don't know what it is. That's it what it turn is. turn black, it turns green. They be using that cheap stuff. They be calling me Mr. Yuck. Oh, Mr. Yuck. Oh. Remember Mr. Yuck? <laughs> Remember Mr. Yuck? You know, we'd like to invite you to definitely tune in next week because our subject matter is going to be, woo, it's mm. going to be off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for visiting with us today. And until next week, bye-bye. Bye-bye, y'all. Happy New Year. Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee, the radio show where we Mike talk so about it all. We did it again, y'all. Beauty, sports, Mike, current events, so health, travel, music, and so Until much week. more. You Bye-bye. can reach us at okay. info at talkwithcassandra.com 